today I'm going to show you the best settings to start recording right away with your CVE-1 from Sony. Let's go! So you're here watching this video because you've just got this camera or you had it for a while now and you still don't know what the best settings are, you're in the right place. So the first thing you need to do is to stick the battery inside. Make sure you use an original battery because sometimes if you don't, the settings that you save on your camera won't be saved. So just watch out for that. The next thing you want to do is stick your SD card in the camera. One thing to mention is that if you want to use the camera to its full potential, you need to get a special card and it's a V90 card. If you don't use these cards, you won't be able to record a 4K 120p and use the higher bit rates and do some slow motion. So make sure you get one of these cards. Unfortunately, they are a bit expensive, but they're worth it to get the most out of your camera. Okay, so you turn on your camera and it's gonna ask you some settings like date and uh, time. And once you've done that, it's gonna ask you for one of the most important settings and that is the auto turn off setting. You can choose between low and high and you might think, oh, what are you doing, Diego? Put it on high. This is gonna allow you to film for longer periods of time and don't worry, nothing will happen to your camera and it won't get overheated. I have had many Sony cameras in the past, a Alpha 6300, a Sony a7 III, and now this one, and I never had any problems with this setting. Okay, the next thing the camera is gonna ask you to do is to do a pixel mapping. To do so, you need to put the lens lid on your lens, if I can get it up, there you go, and press accept. Okay, so let's carry on with one of the first things I would change for video, and that is the shooting mode. Under the menu four, I think it is, and then you go to shooting mode, you want to choose manual exposure. Once you've done this, you'll be able to change all the parameters manually, like uh, shutter speed, exposure, and ISO, so you get more control of your camera when shooting video. For some of you, manual exposure might be a bit of a hassle and difficult to use, but I recommend you learn it so you get the most out of your camera. Image quality. So, go to menu one, and under this menu, you'll be able to find the top two. There is the, uh, the file format, where you'll be able to find the codec and the resolution. And under movie settings, you'll be able to choose the frame rate and the bit rate. And to make this simple, if you want to get the best quality out of the camera, you need to use these settings. You want to choose XAVC SI 4K. When choosing this mode, you'll be getting 4K resolution, you'll be using the codec H264, and you'll be recording in all intra, so you're getting the best quality out of this camera. And then depending on the type of video you want to do, if you're doing something like this and you want to upload to YouTube, you can do 24 frames per second or 25. And maybe if you want to do something like B-roll, you can use 50p. Or if you've updated your firmware on this camera, you can use 120p at 4K. So awesome slow motion. And having chosen this all intro mode, you'll be able to see that under the bit rate, it's grayed out and you can't change anything. This is because this mode has already chosen the best bit rate possible for recording and you'll be able to get the best quality out of it. Okay, from video to sound, go to menu six at the bottom and make sure that it's activated, so it's on. Under the menu point wind noise reduction, I recommend you deactivate this. This can give you some problems in the future. Under the point microphone directivity, this will depend on how you're gonna use the camera, if you're gonna use the uh, a built-in microphone or if you want to use an external one then it's basically obsolete this option but I normally leave this in automatic so under this audio rec levels what you're trying to achieve here is not to clip your audio so if you see that these bars here are getting red then you're clipping so try and keep it under this I normally like putting at about minus 3 dB so that I have some room for post-production I can always put it up or down depending on how the levels were when I was recording Okay, we have image quality and sound. Let's move to color. Okay, to get to the color and tone menu, you need to select this pink menu here. Select color and tone. And the first thing you wanna do is to turn the soft skin effect off. This is something you could do in post-production if you want it, but I personally think it doesn't look good at all. And now let's have a look at the well-known picture profiles. 
Okay, so under this menu point, you're gonna see that there are a lot of picture profiles, but do you need to use one? No, you don't. The picture profiles, they alter the images in a way that uh, helps you get more dynamic range and in post, it gives you a bit more room with your creativity with your films. One of the most popular picture profiles, you've probably heard of it, is the S-Log3. This gives you a very gray image, but when treated well, you can get some really good results. You've probably seen online people getting some really awesome images out of this S-Log3 picture profile. The problem is that this picture profile is quite hard to work with and you need some knowledge in exposing correctly and some color grading knowledge. An easy picture profile that I can recommend you using is the s Turn. This picture profile comes from the Sony cinema cameras. It has a little bit more of dynamic range and it's easier to correct than the others. The next thing I want to talk to you about is the Zebra displays. Under the Zebra display menu, you can activate this by turning this on. So basically, when you're exposing a frame like this and you see these lines on the subject, this means that where the lines are, the subject is correctly exposed. On the other hand, if these lines are not visible, then your image is overexposed and it will be burnt. You won't be able to uh, recover this information of the image. It's a visual help of some sorts, which is quite useful. Okay, image quality, audio and color is done. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about customization. One thing I did with this camera is to customize this button here, the shutter button, to also record when you press it. And this is done by going to the menu with the suitcase, under point three, operation customize, go all the way down to the bottom and under rec shutter, turn this on, and now you can use this button to record your movies. And the cool thing, you can free up the other button, the red one, to customize with whatever customization you please. One last thing I wanted to show you is that you can actually save all the settings that we've already done onto your computer and you can recover this anytime you want. Let's say you did a factory reset of your camera and you wanna put the settings back on it or you wanna give these settings to a friend or you wanna post them on YouTube or on a blog, you can do it this way. On your SD card, go to Sony, Settings, E1, and then Cam Set. In there, you'll find the settings, or you can drag and drop other people's settings or the settings you already backed up. Once you have the settings on your SD card and you want to restore them onto your camera, place the SD card in, go to the last menu, the one with this briefcase, and go to Menu 2. And under that menu, you'll see Reset Save Settings, Save Load Settings, and from there, you'll be able to choose your settings file and load it onto your camera. Okay, that was it from my side. I hope you liked the video. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Take care. Bye-bye.